Welcome to Shardcast, the Brandon Sanderson podcast. We're a bunch of mega fans giving you the news discussion and, of course, a whole lot of opinions about Brandon's works and the Cosmere. I'm tired, and joining me today is Ian. Yes, our warm-up um, period before we record has been very interesting this time. Cause well, I mean, it hasn't been any longer than usual. It's no. it about an hour, unfortunately. <laughs> it, but you are definitely a little sleep deprived. And no, 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 no. See, it's I'm, 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 I'm okay. I'm set, guys. Yeah. Uh, but I'm Weary Rider because I didn't say that yet. <laughs> also joining me is someone no longer in the spiritual realm of Genie. It's true. I, I closed the perpendicularity that resided right there if you were on a video and you can see. But and I wanted to know about Max. It's on the other side. Oh, okay. So, Raffo, I guess. Um, and because I haven't, I haven't been on a podcast in a while because I was in Bulgaria for a couple of weeks. Uh, and also we do this every two-ish weeks now. I have, I have new toys uh, that I haven't shown off. They're Great. very old toys. Uh, I have some some reckoners pop up. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yep. Uh, I, I got those. a I got a, I got a David and I got a a Megan and I got a, a prof. Ooh. There. The camera doesn't focus on them because it sees my face. And it likes your face. It's not the, the only one. Uh, anyway, it was, so on, on the back it says hunt the reckoners and like there are check marks so you can uh, you can see which ones you've you've hunted down. And I have all of them. Awesome. And I'm Argent. (laughs) Also joining us is Shannon. Welcome back. Hi. How are you doing? Hi. I'm great. It's been a long time. It's nothing's happened in my life. I don't have anything, any news. It's just I wasn't available on previous recording sessions. Were you in the spiritual realm? I was not in the spiritual realm. I was visiting my parents. So that that tends to be the reason. Really? In Canada. Yeah, I've been off in Canada. That is north. That's North means up, right? That's yeah, And everyone yeah, knows every, the spiritual everyone realm knows is that. up. Especially it's people like... in the southern hemisphere. <laughs> they love it. They love it there. Come on, this is like north, up, spiritual realm, which is like the idea of heaven. You know, just like mm. that's that's how it works. Canada I... equals spiritual realm. I take you with associating up with the spiritual realm because space doesn't exist or matter in the spiritual realm. <laughs> so it's true. That's a great point, Evgeny. I'm so glad we made it. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was going to be the one bursting into laughter. I've had like 10 hours of sleep this weekend. Meanwhile, Ian is dying. <laughs> I am not sleep deprived at all. Oh my god! <laughs> <sighs> we're not talking about the spiritual realm today. No, we're, we're not. To do not with our topic. Well, I mean, <laughs> well, technically, we're not scheduled to talk about the spiritual <laughs> realm. But it's all connected in the spiritual realm. It's true. <laughs> it's true. Also, uh, everyone, I don't know why Discord's video is flickering. I don't know. It just it just started happening in the last episode in this one. I don't know. It's I don't know. That's just what's happening now. It's great. This is our live. Yeah. So today, everyone, we are going to talk about the Horn Eaters, also called the Unkalaki. Uh, Unkalaki. I Which always is, love saying yeah. glocky. It's a, uh, it's a fun sounding word. Um, I'm going to guess it means like people in their own language because that's what those things usually mean. Sure. Interesting that it has kalak in it. <laughs> we don't know if that's relevant or what, but... Ooh, I didn't notice that. I'm going to go with that this hard blowing note. my mind. Well. Ian, I think mind. you... I cannot say that. <laughs> That I- linguistics are very important for Roshar. Ian, you know what I think? I think you nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Okay. So Great. let's talk about what the Unkalaki are. So they, like the Herdazians, have singer blood in them yep. from long ago. They're a hybrid race. I don't think any of us are reflecting on 
that too hard, but it does mean that they have funky teeth. Yeah, they have yes. like extra sets of teeth or like extra exactly. molar. That the back. We, yeah. So before we paraphrase this in a way that is not necessarily accurate. Sure. Because, you know, we're going to. We do have a word of Brandon talking about that. So they get their red hair from uh, the Prashendi blood or the, the singer blood in them. Okay. And they call them horn eaters because they eat shell and they actually can metabolize it in ways which humans can't. Uh, they've actually got uh, different teeth. That's not the word I was looking for, but it's teeth. relevant. Teeth. They do have different teeth. They have special yeah. teeth. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So there was intermixing long ago. Horn eaters and Hindrazians are both results. Uh, so that's the Hindrazian fingernails are a result of this interbreeding, which we won't talk about much about today. And the horn eaters get extra, extra jaw pieces in the back of the mouth. Jaw pieces. Oh. I love that. That is much. It's gnarly. That's real gnarly. I think that's. The, if anything's gnarly, hinge. that is gnarly. Yeah. That is accurate. Jaw hinge, their jaw hinge mechanism has got to. I wonder. I got to see so this. It's, it's, it's probably, no, it's probably like. So, what I, what I imagine it is, and I'm, I'm not imagining this too hard. Right. They probably <laughs> have. Like shells hard. Bone. Wasn't even going there. <laughs> uh, they probably have like bone teeth like structures at the back of the mouth and like up in the in the throat and so as they chew they probably just go and like crush content like, back there ooh, ooh i hate that That's yeah so, <laughs> so functionally functionally kind of like molars i guess but not up here back and down and just crunch crunch i don't like this i don't like this at all i i just like ooh, that's when you mess with like this area it's sort of like it feels like it, it almost feels like insectoid and i'm it's, like oh it is, it is ooh, strange ooh. like singers do singers do do singers do that is that a thing they do i was wondering that yeah, right like that seems a little strange and in case you forgot, Aiden Alcium created these races and created many of them with the possibility of interbreeding. So it's by Aiden Alcium's design that such a thing's possible uh, because we are in a fantasy series. <laughs> and that yes. is important to remember. <clears throat> the ancient gods said, I'm going to make all these people, but they can have kids. So That's right. Uh, so that's that's what's wanna going see, on. Want to see what they'll get up to? This will be interesting. He but said. not those bug people. We don't want them to interbreed. So no, that's yeah. why they, they have to figure it out for themselves. Oof! Good for them. Kremlin. Good for them. Just yeah. they did it, and they made horn eaters with. Crazy. But yeah, no, it's 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 interesting to consider whether. Um, whether the singers also have this ability. Uh, obviously, we haven't seen much. Obviously, we're going to see a lot more yeah. from them in the yeah. next book. Um, exactly. But like, what little we know about their diet doesn't seem to suggest uh, things like that. Like, they, they grow plants out on the Shattered Plains. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I think it, it's possible that the interaction, it's like residences, where it's like two different things, investors coming together get you like, a third weird thing that isn't necessarily <clears throat> either one because like yeah singers don't have like stone fingernails either but her do they have like, so like therapist, that's you know? yeah so yeah so the combination is bringing something that neither one had but yeah but the fingernails are much more reminiscent of of carapace yeah like yes. it doesn't it doesn't cover their entire body, but you it it's kind of like that. But it, it's very explicitly like they're stone fixed, they're they're crystalline. So they're not <laughs> Yeah. Tight. Okay, that's fair. See see what the singers actually have, which is why I was chuckling before, is 
is a form. The newly discovered form. Chew form. To get you to chew shells. Easy. For when you're alone... <laughs> It, and and you know what's gonna happen? The singer, the missing singers on the shattered planes are gonna discover that, and that's how they're gonna be able to eat. So, just because we haven't seen the singers eat a lot doesn't mean that they can't. I mean, absolutely. we don't know. We don't it's know. become a cultural thing with the with the horn eaters. I think, for you know, it's it, now it's part of their culture. They can eat shells and stuff, and they put it in their soups. But we don't know that the singers can't do it. Just. I bet you they have something like it. So going off of what I re- sincerely hope was a joke from on Chew Form, do yeah, we think absolutely. that the form a singer is in when they interbreed with a human has any effect on the off? Like oh, what dip. a mate form breeding oh, thing is different from like a scholar form interbreed with a human. That is interesting to consider. Do we know if their DNA changes? Well, their spiritual the stuff forms. does, right? Yeah. It's it's really not one of like it's really one of those things where it could go either way. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um it it's it's one of those magical things where Brandon makes up his mind and and all the supporting evidence can just easily fall into into yeah. one of the two buckets. I think um, no matter which way we, it's played, it'll be like, oh yeah, that makes sense. That's what I think. It is, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it is interesting to consider why we got two very distinct hybrids. We got yeah, and very, we got That's Hidalgians. really true. Yeah. So one one way to explain that is well some of those came from this form and some and the others came from that form, mm-hmm. but in that case why do we not have more? Yeah, yeah. Uh, another possibility is uh, one it was like a male singer and a human female and then vice versa for the others maybe sure for. I don't know. That's possible. Yeah. I, I don't know how that would matter, but I don't know how the different species interbreeding is supposed to work on the Cosmere because all the interbreeding is really weird on Roshar. Like the, the hair colors among humans. Like that's not how things actually work. So I don't actually well, know. Well, technically. Well, like, with like not locks among of cats humans. can do it. So like it's not outside of the okay. frame possibility. Weird stuff, San Roshar, is what I'm saying. So, like, I, I feel <laughs> like we we think of like the horn eaters and Herdazia as, as being like mostly human with like some old singer strain, but I don't feel like we have anything on the other side, which is like people who are considered very much singers but have like a little human in them. Mm. I feel like we don't really have that side of it so that that kind of makes me feel like singers visited or you know it would sorry <clears throat> that it was mostly among the human population and then that sort of grew from i have opinions like i feel like it might be mostly human mothers but i'm not sure i don't know enough about genetics to say just well i mean just, yeah but like also the populations have been separated for so long that it, yeah. it's entirely possible like that some of the listeners have distant, distant human ancestry that it's like, true. they just we, wouldn't necessarily know about. Hmm. Yeah, the human, the human side just doesn't present as strongly, just maybe. Yeah. It, one idea that just came into my head from what you were saying is mm. thinking about like maybe now that the singers are back, that maybe there could be singer-human hybrids that are more on the singer side that we might start to see, like... Uh, Ooh. later, I don't know. Some outcasts yeah. or like small communities in the middle of Bumbo Truck. Yeah, I don't know. They're- I think that'd be cool. I'm I'm actually very interested in seeing like a human singer hybrid that leans more heavily on the singer side of things. Absolutely, because that would singers are so well weird from our perspective because we are not singers of course like what would that do to forms and all all of these things like i don't know here's what i here's what i also think i also think that singer 
Singer physiology is more of an advantage on Roshar than human. Um, <laughs> I mean, it, they're native. So, yeah. So they've, yeah, they've, that's, that's precisely it. They have traits that are like more useful for engaging with the other life on Roshar in terms of like eating it and yep. surviving, et cetera, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. So just like, even if we do see like a mostly singer one with a little bit of human, it might not actually turn out to be it might not be something that they would find desirable. That's true. Can you That's imagine good- like, oh, oh, dip, there's a there's a singer, but with human fingernails, the singer can't do anything. What the heck? Ah, uh, those those human fingernails. They're so weak and brittle. Breakable. And can't change. Yeah. Oh no. So like maybe it might be that the reason we don't see it is because one was more of an advantage than the other. And that maybe maybe there have been actually lots, but it was like very it didn't really Or maybe at this stage, maybe a lot of people that we would call singers. There's lots of different sub varieties of singers that mm-hmm. because we're reading things from a human perspective, humans are like, Yeah, I, I don't know the difference. They all look alike to me. You know, yeah, right? Like, yeah. that's yeah, possible too. Yeah. Uh, Dang, there's more to this than I was thinking at the beginning. I, I know, right? Just, I, yeah. I didn't expect this either. <sighs> we per- Our first thing, and we're like, let's immediately get on a tangent. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, that's what you expect on Shardcast. So, okay. singers can change form. Yep. Yep. Horn eaters cannot. Yep. That's How bad, much... Actually. I'm get, pretty sure we have word of brand and say. Didn't we get raffled? We got oh, raffled. We get, oh, we yeah. got raffled. Okay. That, That's a different. Well, that does kind of go into how much singer blood do you think an individual has to have where they can still change forms? Do, is a gem heart required? I think a gem I'm gonna, heart. I'm going to go surely. with a yes. Yeah, I would say so. Okay. Okay. So, so how much singer blood do you need to have, need a, gem to have a gem heart, right? Like, so yeah. we don't know. We've never seen a vivisection or a dissection of a. No one's mentioned them having gem hearts, either of the people. Well, conveniently, the rock think- just brought his entire family. So, <laughs> well, the thing is, okay, so I feel like we, we might have known this because we know that the Alethia have been killing her Dazian since God knows how long. I feel like they this might have come up as information that they know from oh, like maidens. being able from having killed many Herdazians. Stab stab into the insides of a Well no 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 I'm gonna I'm gonna stop you there. Okay. How often do you feel in like regular human to human wars in our world you end up like inspecting the enemy corpses that in depth? <laughs> And, I, I feel like there's a difference also, between no, like going out and inspecting them and yeah, yeah, noticing yeah, but, something from a torn apart. Anyway. Fair. But consider the humans, at least the modern incarnation of humans, didn't know about the, the listeners' gem hearts. And we know from a word of brand that the gem hearts are, one, they're very tiny. To they don't replace like your actual heart. It's just a little like gem that grows. Right. Uh, I think like attached the next next to the sternum. Right. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. it's part of the sternum. So unless you know what you're looking, for. and it looks mm. like bone. Mm. Ooh, that's a good that's point. Right. That's the yeah. listener looks like. Okay. Okay. Well, I mean, so not, not like, like milky white type of things. So right. It's similar enough to bone. So you, un- you unless you were looking specifically for that. Unless you were being like a wartime scientist. Yeah, you'd have to really specifically look for it, and that seems yeah. unlikely, given yeah. Yakovet and Alethkar. And given society. their current, given their current political situation, I don't think they're going to go killing Herdazians and Horn Eaters anytime soon. Huh. Not- and if. And if this is, <laughs> I don't think that's if what's this is information. Next. Yeah, no. And uh, and I and if they only are figuring out by you know the the parsh becoming fully sapient again, that this is common knowledge to them, but it isn't common knowledge to like the 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 singers and the li- like the listeners know this. This the new singers might not. I'm really interested what like the fused might think of these hybrids. That's a 
really interesting to think about abominations oh. that need to be well it, maybe maybe I, uh, I, that that I, seems I, very I likely but maybe maybe not maybe they'd be like i mean you could join us i mean yeah if you want to help us kill they'll, humans, they'll take humans. Yeah. So, yeah 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 and so maybe they would be like better in the pecking order than just regular humans helping them it's, maybe but know. not not quite up there as, yeah. as the singers they have a new cast system Yay. Yay! Such Yay. improvement! Yay! Oh. No, at least they're not the fuse, slaves. Hmm? The fuse don't strike me as too discerning and discriminating. I mean, that's true. If you if you show passion, they're like, all right, cool, you're in. You want to help us kill humans? All right, great, cool. Down with that. Let's kill some Good radiance. <clears throat> they're I very agree. easy to convince. Just, well, I feel... <laughs> This, there yes are really there no. are some smart ones, but I feel like Moash didn't have to try too hard, or is that like his his net? Anyway, that's this, this is a real <laughs> real tangent. This is a very big tangent. Now. Let's talk about Moash in our Horn Eaters podcast. <laughs> Secretly, Moash turns into a Horn Eater in Book Four. Dun, 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 dun. <clears throat> he's, um, he's got very District Nine. So what if? How about we talk about what the uh, Unkalaki think of what their origin story is? Uh, Rock tells the origin story of the Unkalaki during one of their bar trips in Birds of Radiance. Mentions that, like, originally they lived among all the other people where the air was thick. Because that's a thing that the Unkalaki believe that love me too some much thick air. air yes <laughs> like, everybody wanted to kill them so first they went to the god of the trees for help and the god of the trees is like yeah like i can't help you like men are like killing all of my children so like just like okay go um then they went to the god of the waters and it's just like yo like humans are already like fishing up all of my fish like i can't help you and then they go to the god of the mountains. The god of the mountains is like, it's like very inhospitable here. Like you're not going to survive. So, but then they went to all three gods at once. And it's like, hey, if you come together and each give us one thing, we can make a life here. And that's kind of what happened. The t- peak <clears throat> of the mountain was open. It was filled with water. and Made warm. Made, made warm. warm. Yeah, and then like trees and life started growing in the inhospitable peaks. And Bridge Four does not know how to listen to a story. They interrupt him constantly to yes. say, "This is stupid." Yes. And I'm yes. like, <laughs> yeah. "That Let sounds Rock like a very story. that sounds like a very Alethi way of thinking about oh other culture." Hilarious, like that just <laughs> ha ha ha. Yeah. Ha, ha, ha. What? They were gonna they were gonna use you like trees? Ha, ha. You know, Ian, you looking back at this where Rock's like where Pete asks, who would hate horn eaters? And Rock's like everyone. Knowing that they have singer ancestry, like, mm-hmm. oh yeah, that, yep. that makes Yeah. Right. Yeah. People way back would probably not be okay with that. Mm-hmm. When I was rereading this segment a little earlier today, I realized the same thing. It's like, like, yeah, that's probably why. It's not mm. just because they're good fighters. It's because it's like, hey, yeah, they're like void bringers, and or like the void bringers can inhabit the singers. That's not good. It's like really bad. Mm-hmm. Yep. It is mentioned that the waters of these lakes are not just waters. It water of life. It is connection to God. And if an Unkalaki swims in it, sometimes they see place of God. <coughs> Cognitive realm. <laughs> mm-hmm. yes. The place of the gods. Uh, yeah. Important to uh, bring up. Yep. The Unkalaki people seem to use the word god or gods for any kind of cognitive entity, really. So, they're very sprint, liberal. Definitely. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yeah. But also probably like greater so they, they would probably consider the Stormfather and the Night Watcher as as gods. Uh they will definitely consider the shards as gods. So yeah. 
when they when 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 rock says that um like the first king or the whatever king of the Yunkalaki went to the god of the mountains and the god of the forests we mm. could be looking at shards in this or we could be looking at spren good point yes and it could like be any spren. spren yeah 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 so like, well, the god of the waters could be kusakesh for all we know sure they they could have Huh, I'm I'm now just like imagining the original Ukalaki to like go through the perpendicularity because in case you didn't know, cultivation's perpendicularities in, in the Horn Eater Speaks, uh this emerald pool, uh and Earthbringer spoilers, watch yeah, out. Yeah, you know, yeah. uh and uh Hoyd goes through and Rock mentions it in this story. Luanaki. Um, yes, the god of travel and mischief. Um <sighs> Perfect. which Came is very from... appropriate and... mm. yeah yeah angular face handsome with white hair signals like white hair and made mockery of rock's beard uh and thought rock's name was funny very powerful god but what i'm imagining the original horn eater uh going through the perpendicularity and me and somehow like talking to the soul of the mountain or something like i don't know like that's a thing that's possible that we that could have happened yeah. or something yes. yeah yeah but um well, i'm with it the big spren probably have a manifestation in the physical world in the same way that Storm, sure. the storm father does that's probably so true. in in my head that's always how these things happen. Like, <laughs> sure. Um, the the Unkalaki people lived somewhere, and then their king was like, "Okay, I'm gonna figure something out." And then he goes to, let's say, the valley and talks to either the night watcher or cultivation. And then he goes to somewhere, uh, whoever the god of the waters is, and talks to that spren. Or it's probably not a shard. It's probably a spren. And then that happens, and then goes to. Again, whoever the god of the mountains is, uh, in my head, that's always been um, the the great spren of the mountains uh, that Zeth refers to like one time. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, so yeah, that's true. I or the I've great mentioned this spren before on Starcast. Yes, the sibling I think uh-huh. could potentially be involved here because the sibling was largely responsible, like. The Earth, Iru, Fabriol, that makes that place habitable. It, like, yep, with the warm, warm and like, yeah. I think there's something about air pressure too. That yeah, I vaguely remember. There's a reference. I don't remember. I think I think it was from the Gem Archive, and like one of the old radians was wondering why the air pressure wasn't changing like i think it was getting i think it was getting colder i think it was getting too cold for crops yeah yes definitely but but the air pressure wasn't changing so like well why why isn't it all going to hell yeah i'm just gonna quickly look that up sibling weirdness yeah but so like that's kind of my explanation for like where is the sibling now the horn eater peaks sure Ooh. Why would they move to, like, but the Horn Eater, like, the Unkalaki have been there. Why is yeah. everyone else going to the Horn Eater Peaks? Why is Molot going there? Why is the Fused going there? Well, presumably well, they presume because perpendicularly. <laughs> I mean, that's a very um, convenient <clears throat> access point. Then you can could. Brandon likes to do multiple things at the same time. I don't time. think it's just that it's that it's a gate. I think there's something else going on. That's possible. Yeah. That's like, possible. Oh wait. The, the sibling, sibling is there. there too. Like the sibling is in hiding, so it's like Odium might not know he's there. Or they they are there. Right. But yeah. during the Horn Eater arc that I really hope is in, in book, book four. four. Yeah. yeah. Or the novella. That if Brandon right. gets around to writing that, because Brock's novella is supposed to take place uh, at home. In the, well, not necessarily in the Horn Eater's Pigs, but he goes there. So, like, how much of that journey yeah. the novella is going to span is unknown. But, and it, it's supposed to take place between books three and four. So, yep. 
Okay. So I did just find the epigraph, uh, and it's what Arjun said. The wilting of right. plants and the general cooling of the air is disagreeable, but some of the tower's functions remain in place. The increased pressure, for example, persists. But is it still persisting to the modern day? Um, yeah. Oh. I mean, they, they can live there. Yeah. They but don't... Like, they notice that the air is colder because, hey, top of the mountain. But they're not like short of breath when they are there. That's true. It really depends on specifics on the sibling, which we have absolutely no idea. Like there could be similar <clears throat> mechanics in two different applications of the same thing. And like the sibling is doing the same thing that whatever happened at the Horn Eater Peaks. It's also possible that this entire story is metaphorical and cultivation just did like made some mountains and stuff. That's like true. that. That is, yeah. I which is the boring explanation. It, I think it is boring. I think like, I mean, I agree. The bridge, the bridge for reaction to the, like the, to the story is always like, Oh, this is dumb. Rock's just a silly foreigner. You know, I feel like it's, it's all leading to this really this really intricate picture of like there's something mysterious about the Horn Eater Peaks, which is like keeps being built up and it you know it keeps getting written off because we keep getting bridge four POVs, which are like, oh, rock, it's just being rock. <laughs> but yeah. the more the more we actually look at it, I'm like, no, I think there's there's something here. It might not be exactly what Rock says. Like we we would use different words for when he when he says like the god of the mountains, probably, but Mm-hmm. Yeah, that that is the boring thing. I think there's something something more real here than not. I mean, the 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 knowledge that cultivation's perpendicularities there is enough to make the Hornier Peaks interesting in yeah. in multiple ways. Like you have, you have, they are a travel hub. They have magical things going on. Yeah. Um, so on on Padgy, the fact that you have a perpendicularity there facilitates all sorts of magical shenanigans with with beasts yeah. coming in and out of the physical and cognitive realm and just ambient magic being a little higher than it would normally be. So you can you can have a lot of funky things going on with the peaks. It wasn't the patchy pool an emerald pool? It was like green, right? I believe so. I am not going to say that, but we can find very quickly. I feel like it was, and the only reason I uh, say that is because Sigzil refers to it as the Emerald Pools here. And uh, there's one other thing how Calvin's like, you see uh, the Spren because of what happened to you in these waters. And Rock's like, it's it's not part of the story, but it is involved and we know it's a there's a perpendicularity. So we we didn't really talk about that. that with the physiology with that that they can see spren. <laughs> yeah. I which... at first I used to think it was part of the physiology, but then I reread this bit and I thought, "Oh man, what if what if this is only because of like where when, when they grew up at the at these peaks? Like do you think they had this ability before they went or maybe to it's the like a particular thing that like swimming in the perpendicularity? Or, I, I don't know. <sighs> Uh, my my read on this is not everyone who goes into the pools comes out being able to see spren. Sure, but Makes also sense. like you you need to have something happen to you there. Whether that something is you need to transition into the cognitive and then and then back out. Whether it is a a specific spren there that kind of visits you as a as a a, a genie of some sorts, right? And like grants you the ability to do that. Sure. Uh, whether it is uh, maybe you need to swim deep enough to wait, because uh, the way Brock talks about it, it's just regular water and like hot springs on top and then the waters of life uh, on the bottom. So maybe you need to swim deep enough to like soak in this, what I imagine is investiture infused waters. Or maybe you need to stay there, or maybe you need to drink the waters. Like, who knows? But it's not just... I imagine it's not a one-step process. Like, no. Rox is involved. Yeah. Yeah, so singers do have an enhanced ability to see, which we True. 
for C in Birds of Faith. Yep. So I wouldn't be surprised if like one, you have to be like of like have some singer ancestry. It's like a regular human going to this is not gonna become an Alai group. Yeah. Sure. I, but, which I which makes sense because there's no evidence of that, right? <clears throat> yeah. So like there's like something like unlocking like some part of their singer ancestry, like but, which it's like almost like snapping, but not quite. It's also like huh. how like AVR like they need you need to eat this worm that ate the fruit of the tree that is growing next to this. There's a lot yeah. of different possibilities for what this prerequisite could be. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess uh, just reading about this is that not every horn eater is can see the spren, which I had forgotten personally because Rock's like ah that's my. That's my go-to horn eater. Every horn eater is like rock, but I was like, that's not that right. is not true at yeah. all, right? <laughs> um, it it would have been it would have been nice to have another one like every now and then just so we can contrast the two. Yeah, I mean we've seen and, and, other horn eaters, but not from their like viewpoint or really yeah. like dig into them. <laughs> well, I, I mean Shalon dig into one. But... I think it's probably by design. Well, yeah. Is that like Rock's chapter where he meets his family and they they unveil that there's something going on was our reveal too. Like that was we we had the we had the hood over our eyes as much as Bridge Four yeah. does up until that moment, and now we know something's up. Now yeah. we know Rock is special. Yeah, like um, having another viewpoint would have undermined Rock's arc. Fair, fair. Um, I will also bring up that this like additional thing that Rock alludes to um, related to his ability to see Spren could be something unrelated that he just doesn't want to talk about. So one of my one of my kind of head canony ideas that I imagine we're gonna get into um, further a little later into the podcast is that Rock was somehow involved in the death of a relative. And if it because he bumped from like fourth plus to third son, right? right? Uh, which we're also going to talk about. And so if if that uh, let's assume it was an accident involved the pools in some way, and it was also um, uh, 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 indirectly why and how Rock got his ability to see Spren, then. Maybe just dipping in the pool is enough, but he doesn't want to talk about the reason he got in there because it's connected to the a death tragedy. of a relative. Yeah. yeah. So I, I it's it's a little head canony, but it's it's a viable explanation of why he doesn't want to talk about this. That's possible. I mean that that's certainly possible, right? It, it, yeah. Yeah. Can't rule it out. I don't think I agree, but I'm like the, yeah, I don't want to fight it. It's like that's fine. Well, yeah, I mean, it's just like there's nothing there, that like indicates it, but there's nothing that disproves it either. It so like, yeah. Yeah. there are a lot of very specific details that uh, that need to be correct for this to happen. Were, that's true. There's a lot of things we don't know about the horn eaters, and so I think spitballing is on brand. For I like Rock's um, reaction to their reaction. It's like, this is not true. Listen to the story. Stop being boring. That's how I think you got to be with Rock Story. Stop being boring. Don't yeah. go for the obvious answer. There's something interesting going on. That's what Rock wants us to think. I love Come reading on. Rock's people. Um, do we have fun. anything else about the mythology uh, on here? Mythology? Yeah, like Rock Story about the horn eaters. I guess... So one thing that we can we can we can't even theorize about, but we can guess about is when do we think this migration to the peaks happen? Mm, good point. So obviously it couldn't have been before the first desolation, because no humans, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> we we've narrowed it down slightly. All right, from early prehistory to present day all right all the desolations I feel like if um based on our previous conversation i think we have a kind of a guess it would have to be at a time when the singers like before bat adomishram um prison prison lock away so people would actually understand what the horn eaters were 
and not, like they weren't just like, oh, those are just horn eaters, they, you know, and really good at fighting. But if we really think it was because people knew that they were singer hybrids, it would have to be in a time when the singers being what they are was at least within living memory. So I, I think it's got to be got to be in and around or before. I think it's kind of our cutoff is it's got to yeah. be like I could see it happening slightly after slightly after like, living oh, like, memory. Yeah. Singers are like no longer a problem. But wait, there's these humans that have singer ancestry. You okay. should keep your yeah. eyes on that. Yeah. Sure. But it okay. would have to be Fair. still a time when people still remembered Definitely. like what the singers what the totally singers agree. were. Yeah. So unfortunately that that narrows it down to like all the, the times beginning. of the heralds existing to the recreants. <laughs> that's, that's Essentially, the, really... the heraldic yeah. epochs. Yeah. We have um, the front end and the back end. <laughs> we have it at least. Technically yeah, um, better than nothing, but not much. Technically. Um, it's my favorite, favorite we, kind of meat, right? We don't see horn eaters or herdazians in the flashbacks. I like the, like yeah. the visions. Which sure. doesn't necessarily say much, but we don't. There's lots of things we don't see in the flashbacks, for example, right? Yeah, yeah, that's true. We could be looking at very early Rosharan history. Like, humans arrive, and they find singers, and they're like, I'm gonna smash that. <laughs> yeah. Or, as or as this, is, this is completely possible. Oh yeah, or, as yeah, humans yeah, do. Awesome. This, is, this is not uncanon information. <laughs> this, is, this is canon. We Just watch happened. Captain Kirk on the original series. Yeah, of we know I it mean, happened. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Your carapace is so big. <laughs> if you've if you've seen or read any sci-fi, do you know that this yeah. is like the human the human superpower? We love carapace is no carapace is no barrier. It's to no. love. <laughs> Car- it's not or, a barrier to love <laughs> or anything else. <laughs> or any. <yeah. laughs> Anyway, so we could be looking at that. Uh, and then... No, I think um, we should talk about what was just happening. <laughs> no, we, we should oh, not. We could do that. No, we I should. think that's a, di- that's a different podcast. That's a, that's a very different podcast. One that's, that's uh, not safe for work. I don't... That's dark cast. Um, <laughs> shard cast after dark. Shard cast after dark, yeah. I have wine. Well, I could start right now. Just... No, we'll, we'll, we'll get to it. We'll get to it one day. Don't worry about it. Yep. Um, so we, we could be looking at that. So very early on, they get it on. And if we go with the assumption that the first desolation was within a single generation of the arrival of the Ashenites on Roshar, yep. then that doesn't really give you much time to like develop a population of hybrids, right? Um, yeah. No. Plus, the humans were supposed to be confined in in what was going to be uh, Shinkik, Nash, Shab, Shinovar, whatever. Um, I bet Shin you Kakesh. they were probably babies at that time. Because that takes time to come to a decision, right? That the, the populations have interacted, and then they make a decision. And then the human women start having babies. I mean, like, we, we have... In ti- isolation. We, we have time periods of centuries between the first desolations so like that's plenty of time like it could just happen there and like where like especially after the first time the heralds go and like imprison the fused and stuff like great we did it great everything's great all good and then people lived in harmony and some humans and singers were especially in harmony that's possible yeah perfectly Um, possible i think it is unlikely for it to happen between the second desolation and the false desolation. Uh, I mean, uh, these, these are sapient at, species. Like, well, they are, but at, at that point, I feel like the humans would start seeing those as the enemy. Yes. However, like overall, yes, individuals still exist. There's going to be humans that like singers are not our enemies. And there's going to be in singers be- that are like humans. There. And before the radiance, like two generations after a desolation, 90% of the population's dead. You forget a lot. Like two, yeah. three generations out. Like, yeah, the desolations get shorter. Uh, the time between desolations get shorter and shorter. So there'd be some memory, but like 
the fact that their entire civilization really collapses, like, eh, you know, there's probably more intermingling with those societies than would... Perhaps, but I f- feel like they would remember that this is the enemy. Uh, even if, they, if even if they don't remember the specific of like, well, the fused come from another <laughs> world and then they possess these people and things like that. But still, um, it's like I I don't think there are always going to be individuals that are willing to. Do look we know past how that. big the current horn eater population is? I don't think we, we know. Do. Herdesi is like a whole country and whatever, and they they have like less. But do we know? Do we know if we like the horn eaters are? A smaller, though they're a smaller nation. We think of them as yeah. like a smaller nation than than the Alessi. Yakoved uh, yeah. considers the Hornyder Peaks part of them. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, so I, I would can't imagine anything if it's a more smaller like, population. I could still, I could still see it being possible, even even through that time, because all it needs is like a small group of outsiders who yeah. who consider themselves to be outsiders. All right? you need is one know. group. Like, all you need is like one group of people to be like, yeah, these cultural norms don't apply to us anymore. And and, and they go like live you, separately. You, they have this yeah. one village. And, and of- you guys, you're not so bad either. And then they work together in cooperation. It's like, hey, let's build a storm shelter so the storms don't kill us. And then they're like, and then like and you then have you're them stuck somewhere together. In, yeah, like in I don't like, know. In- in close quarters for the duration of a high storm, <laughs> and you're like, "Oh man, we got to talk." And what, what are we gonna do? <laughs> we can't leave. Uh, how how are we gonna pass the time? Yeah, like I I don't think it's that difficult, but I think it is easier in like those early desolations. In the time yeah, between that makes them. that makes more sense. Like because half a half singer half half human is going to be a lot different than that this is a whole separate people group with a very defined set of mm-hmm. what have what do you even call like physiological features that are very specific yeah. and so it i think it's got to take a good amount of time for a specific amount of features to sort of settle into into yeah. the genetics yes. Also very, very worthy of consideration, the fact that there has been enough time for the Hornitors to intermingle with uh, Yakavet. Yep. With the Mm Vader people. Yep. Yeah. There's also the fact that Hornitors could emerge as a people long before they got to the peaks. Absolutely. I think going to the peaks is a much more recent. Like if Hornitors started like happening. Historically speaking. Yeah. Yeah. Go, the migration of the peaks could have been like fairly late, like more yeah. closer to the fi- um, false desolation. I feel like if it's an oral history, I almost want to say it's sort of it's been since the last desolation. Like five thousand years is that's an oral history, of, of, but it's at this level of kind of like vague. The God of the Mountains, and we did. It's like yeah, you know, it is. It is definitely in the style of a creation myth, and I'm like ah. Some things have probably changed since I could see that this being like a recent, a recent thing. Yeah, I would say personally that I think the Horn Eaters would have needed to start existing pre Radiance, and I mean I, I couldn't hazard a guess when they moved to the peaks, but uh, around the last desolation is good enough for me. Uh well, if we go with my sibling idea, it could have been much later than that. Well, that's true. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. That's a good point. So our base, our basic conclusion is we're basically undone all of our previous conclusions, and we're like, it could have all happened whenever. Well, yeah. Yes. Well, no, 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 no. no. <laughs> well, uh, at least when they move to the peaks is really unclear. Like that could. Yeah. We can come up with justifications for any time. Yeah. Yeah. What I wanted to bring up yes. is the dark timeline. The dark timeline. The dark timeline. Okay, I, I, let's hear it. The one and and so oh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna I'm gonna preface this with I don't think Brandon would do that because okay. he's Brandon. Uh, and two, I'm not gonna go into details because Brandon wouldn't do that. But I'm just gonna I'm just gonna set the mm-hmm. set the canvas for you. It it's is. All black. It's all black. 
with a little bit of red. All void light. It is the time of the false desolation. Okay. And the humans have finally defeated their enemy of of many thousands of years. Yep. And their enemy is now brainless for all intents and purposes. They're mindless. Yep. They are slaves. They all they do is follow orders. Some people. Ah, yeah. right. May, I see where you're going with this. this. Yep. Yeah, I thought of this earlier. I was like, I, I thought of this too earlier. Talk about um, this. I mean, <laughs> oh, yeah. this. Oh, no. Yeah. Okay. People because they are people. Yeah. I don't well. know if that would be enough to like <sighs> make a species. One, not or only, like a not only start a population, but also have that population be sapient and also have that population like escape, like not just yeah. be one off yeah. here and there. I think what you're saying did occur, but I don't think that's where the horn eaters came from. That's not on, what I think. Not on, not I on do that think, scale. I do think it happened. I what I would like, you know, yes, this has occurred to me as well, but I wasn't gonna say it out loud. But yes, mm -hmm. I I think this has happened. I do think you know what? No, I just I was about to say something about like my 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 concept or understanding of what would have happened to the babies. But I actually am think thinking, I'm like, no, you know what? That hasn't really come up whatsoever. And I don't think there's any, we have any book, any in-world basis for what happened to the... The only basis for this is humans suck. I mean, yeah, like, yeah, we, we know this is how slaves in our world were treated. And these have even less of a mind, which is much grosser. Uh, and great. So I would say some humans are particularly awful. And so I definitely think that occurred. Yeah. I just don't think this is how the people group of the horn eaters was made. Yeah. I, I don't think so. Yeah. I agree. I think it's, I think it's too recent for one. And I think it's, you'd enslave the, uh, offspring also like, again, with the whole, the singer lobotomization passes through generations. So like, how would that even work with human singer yeah. hybrids? Like, I don't think it would work. With this specifically, I could see like the introduction of of human in the mix, like yeah. fixing some of it. But it's it it's still very problematic, and it's still very non Brandon thing to do. I mean, Brandon writes about awful things. The Stormlight Archive is basically about slavery I and mean, racism. The Coloss just. Bringing that up, yeah. like it, 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 he he's he'll, he'll written dark things. I, he, I like, think so. He doesn't. I think it's very true. Brandon won't delve into it, but yeah. I don't think he write. I don't think he excludes that it happens. So, well, yeah. here here's what I think. So, the reason I don't think he would do that is because when he addresses or when he wants to address a problem in in his in his fiction. Mm -hmm. I think the problem is never one-sidedly gendered. So he, if he deals with racism, like it's we're talking about racism that's it, it applies to everyone in that race. Like if we are dealing with socioeconomic problem, it is a problem that applies to ev whoops, to everyone <laughs> in that um, in that socioeconomic status. Uh, the one time gender enters the equation is with the Alethi. Or, or at least that's like where it enters significantly. And, but, but it enters that equation in a symmetric way. He goes, there are problems on both sides of this, right? And so I, I don't think he is the kind of author who will use rape for narrative purposes. I no, generally agree with that. It did get touched on with in Mistborn, like it's, yeah, it's totally the scar. And yeah. Yeah. But fair. I think I think he will if it calls for it. I you think know, it could like there be was touched a very on historic. Mm -hmm. Sorry. There is a very yeah, no, I, I agree. I'm just I yeah. do think yeah, the ska and the coloss, I think I think if he he's not going to shy away from it, but it's you're right that he he 
he's not going to dive into it just to just to shove it in people's faces and say, hey, yeah, it's people not gonna are terrible. It is. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's exactly it. He's like, yeah. this is how people can be. But then he, I, I feel like Brennan does like to go to the end result and say, is there a way to redeem the situation? Yeah, I mean, you know, actually which, tying this back to Gray's point from very long ago about singers with a teeny bit of human that oh yeah that this could be that like, yeah yeah <sighs> the deep sign we're all yeah. doing right I mean, now it, stormlight archives about slavery and dealing with that like it mm-hmm. it is though yeah so slavery yeah. and colonial yep that's kind of a thing that's gonna be pretty persistent i imagine I don't think Brandon's going to go into it, but I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if it got a mention yeah. or a little bit of a little bit of spotlight in the future. Just be like, this is a reality of what happened with the with the new singers and their experiences. I think that's totally if, if it if it came up once or twice as like, I I think we we might that might be something that happens if he can fit it in. Yeah, but I think so. I think that's possible. Maybe. That, that's possible. How about we talk about something less like this and talk about the actual peaks themselves? Uh, we talked about uh, there is a perpendicularity and we talked a bit about things, but we don't actually know how many peaks there are. Uh, Brandon Correct. doesn't want to canonize it. That's kind of interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, is it? To me, to me, it didn't yeah. mean anything. To me, it was, hey, it's a mountain range. There are peaks up there. It's not like a significant like it's it's not 10 it's not 16 or if it is it's <laughs> not because these numbers are significant yeah. it's just yeah i haven't i haven't decided because I, I i guess the only reason why i i mentioned that is this question here is like how many porny peaks are there or is it irrelevant and brandon's like it's not irrelevant which is like <laughs> but i mean what oh, is okay, relevant yeah. is can be interpreted mm-hmm. very broadly right so yeah, yeah. is there does each of the pools at each of the peaks have the way into the cognitive realm? Unclear. It, it's, okay. it is very unclear. Uh, That's that was one of what something that occurred to me as we were going through that is sort of like, well, we know that there are different horn eater groups based on which peak they're actually physically from, yeah, and we know that like the peaks. Plans. Yeah, and we know that like the peaks have fought each other in the past. So we know like they, mm. they weren't always necessarily like they don't always consider themselves like one one big family. You know, we we know that there is some level of distinction between the Horn Eater clan groups at the peaks. So is it significant that are we are we thinking of Rock's spe- specific peak as being unusually special? In that, in that they can act, they can access the water of the gods, or is this something that all horn eaters have access to? And this is like a, this is every horn eater, every peak, every waters. Like, and I'm so curious because we don't know because we only have one horn eater POV character. Yeah, my inclination has always been all of the peaks have a beneath them that yep. connect. It, that is a perpendicularity. Because yeah. if there was only one, that I, I feel like that would be like this is the chosen peak. This these are yeah. our exactly. It, the, and we never get that case. feeling. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we never get that feeling that there is one special peak that you know. Rock doesn't say he's like from the Horn Eater Peak or from the special one. He's just like yeah, I'm from the peaks. Yeah, and like yep. you know, I'm totally cool with most perpendicularities on Roshar being really weird. Like, honors is really weird, obviously. <laughs> Cultivations could just be like, yeah, spread out between these peaks. What are you going to do? But, like, like, there is precedence with this. With, there is. Like, pits of Hath. To, exactly. Like, that was just what I was thinking. Refer to it as, like, oh. the, the small pools at the peaks. Yeah, I... That, that, at the pits, not the peaks. <laughs> the peaks of Hathson! <laughs> yeah. Harmony That'd remade it. Very different. Plot. Yeah. The, pe- the peats... Of the peaks of Hessen. Uh yeah, I think that's totally possible. That that occurred to me as well. Uh yeah. just just in case uh listeners forgot, uh perpendicularities get you to Shadesmar. That's how uh typically 
uh, world hoppers transition between places uh, as you go through a perpendicularity. Uh, and then you walk through the cognitive realm. Uh, and so there this legend points. of rock... Hmm? They're like perpendicular points where all th- three realms become one. A. A. But uh, Rock was saying... It, w- it was mentioned in Rock's story that, oh, the people who go in the pools don't come back. And Sigzel's just... That's because you kill the people who go in That's there. That's because Rock's you like, execute oh. the people. It's like, no. Well, no. But like... If you saw someone go into the pool and never co- came out, like, yeah, I can see how that gets interpreted differently, but they w- they did some world happen, you know? They went into yeah. the cognitive realm, so that's what's up there. Um, and sometimes people come out of the pools and, like, they're treated as gods. Which also seems very yep. sensible culturally, like, whoa, who are you? What's up? It is interesting to me that Hoyd has done this enough to to warrant a place in the Horn Eater pantheon. He has a name. He has a name. And he yep. has a Rock Eater name. Rock f- just he has a Horn Eater name. <laughs> rock yeah. Eaters or something else. <laughs> His wife has a name, Gray. <laughs> <laughs> they say that the the horn eater peaks are covered in snow except at the hot springs so that's that's a physical mm. part of yep. the place which, which makes sense yeah it makes sense high snowstorms yep. high blizzards high well, that sounds really fun yeah big thunder snows um it is Very fun scary. to know that there exists snow spren oh, yeah. i bet you they're Wait, like what? i bet you there are yep, snow spren it's a wob. There's no spren at the peaks? Snow Snow spren. S N O W. I was like, There's wait, no what? Spren at the- <laughs> what? They know spren? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> this is what I get for reading our, our notes no. and I'm like not paying attention to what people are saying. It's like, yeah, we know there's no spren. I'm like, wait, what? I was like, snow spren. <laughs> We have different, a wob. Different, different place. <laughs> different place. Look, Ian and Evgeny could probably like come together and be like, "Yeah, there's a wob," and I'd be like, "Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah got it. Yeah, got it." Um, it's one of mine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> Interesting how Tuaka, Rock's wife, Lunamore's wife. Where? We're not being very good at using Unkalaki uh, terminology in this podcast. They'd be very offended. I think. Well, rocks. If not you offended. if you are a horn eater, leave us an angry comment on YouTube. <laughs> Tell us how you chew your shells, uh, <laughs> please. We're very curious. <laughs> Post a video response. <laughs> <laughs> God. Uh, but Tuaka mm. says that the peaks are home. Something is wrong. Very wrong. Which uh, could simply be Moloch coming there. That's uh, always yeah. been my assumption. Yeah. I mean, probably fused are starting to come through there, so it's probably not great either. We know a diagramist is on his way to go check out Moloch. Joe Shore, yep. the leader of the Silent Gatherers. Mm-hmm. I don't think Moloch alone would necessarily like, yeah, prompt that because like Moloch was like around Carbranth for quite some time, and yeah. nobody's like, there is an eldritch evil here. We can tell. It was just like. Sometimes but they are nearer things when they die. I agree. But the horn eaters can see to the other side. Yeah. If they know That's that the void, there are void spread and fused chilling on the other they're, side of the they're perpendicularity. right next to the perpendicularity. And, and we just said the weird horn eaters stuff can are looking through into the realm of the gods and going, hmm, there's something bad going nice. down in the realm of the gods. Uh, two important things to note not all horn eaters can do that. Mm-hmm. Yep. But I think a lot of them. I think enough of them can. <laughs> enough of them for them to know something is perhaps, wrong. Perhaps. Uh, and to yeah, yeah uh, my assumption has always been that the fact that cultivation's perpendicularity is there means that if Moloch is on the other side, then some of his like influence is uh, seeping through, so to speak, and just making things nasty. What I think about what we have been given about the information in Oathbringer is that I think we're being led to think that there is something a little bit more significant happening. Yeah. Whatever, you know, maybe, you know, maybe like more than just them guarding the gate, perhaps, you know, um, 
I don't think Moloch is needed to guard a gate. I think the void spren infused on the other side of it have that on lock. Why is yeah. Moloch there? You know, I think there's something, I think we're being sure. led to question this for a reason. I think, I think, I think we're being given just enough to go, huh, that's weird. What's going on in Hornier Peaks? Yeah. I think, I think yeah. that's the purpose. Yeah. I think. I think that's pretty Moloch solid. is there. Like, why is Moloch there? I mean, what there, is, there, what is. There could be more unmade there as well, but like, why does yeah. Odium's forces want it? You're totally right. Just. Just to remind people uh, that uh, when they're in Shadesmar, it's like there's void spren sailing warships and demanding tribute from any who approach. And then they're like, yeah, we're no one's going to sail to the perpendicularity. <laughs> they, they will not do that. Um, but they're not like murdering people who go like they demand tribute. Well, we don't know if any humans have successfully tried to get there. These are Spren talking among Spren. Also so, true. I mean, also true. yeah, yeah they, they're probably a bit nicer to the Spren, but like, obviously, they were searching for these radiants, for example, and humans yeah. could, it could be a very different thing. And presumably, this is how the fuse just get into Shades Mar, get right? places because yeah. they, they would inhabit singers in the physical and then just be like, hey, let's just, uh, let's, let's do some conquering and. The cognitive realm if, and walk if a the, bunch yeah. of like singers showed up in the Hornier Peaks, like did they even have parchment? Like they they just they had their 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 servants within their family, right? Do we know if they even had parchment up in the Hornier Peak before? I've always assumed that they don't. That was my kind of running assumption up until this very moment. Is that if if a bunch of singers showed up, it wouldn't be like, oh man, our slaves turn on us. It would be like, okay, this is a force of invading people. They they would they would never have that narrative of our our slaves are turning on yeah. on our society. Yeah, I could definitely like if they knew what they were when they went to the peaks, like as in like we are singer human hybrids. Right. I don't think they would have taken like. Well, they probably would have gone before like, the um, false dis- or yeah, they false went before the false desolation. They might have brought singers with them if they were family. If they were family, but I don't think they would ever made the transition to slaves. Right? Yeah, I just like there. There's just so much, so much complicated history there i don't know if i like it just leads me to think like it's i i just don't think there were any any parse people there no perhaps not my assumption from from reading altbringer has always been that odium's voice voices forces odium's voices voices <laughs> <laughs> captured the perpendicularity <laughs> um uh, has have have always considered the peaks important because like solely because of the perpendicularity there like that's they enough. want to control that they want to control traffic they want to be able to go through it is as far as we know the only stable perpendicularity on roshar so mm-hmm. them being able to control that means they are essentially controlling traffic between the realms until l scholars show up um yeah that's true and you have dalnar and yeah and there there are a few radiants but only i think Large Only else callers would yeah. probably be able to to escape easily. Will shapers probably could. Regardless of the yeah. specifics, <laughs> you you take the surge binders, you take the radiance away, and transfer between realms becomes virtually non-existent unless you control cultivation's perpendicularity. Yeah. And so yes. it makes a lot of sense to me for them to send a lot of void spread, a lot of fused, uh, even unmade or three to like hold this place because it's really, really important. Place, yeah. Places that if if you were Odium and that you wanted to capture both gate cities, uh, the perpendicularity. Uh, like you want to so- be able to travel on fast. You don't want your enemies to be tra- to travel around fast. This is like this is this is this is the this is how the war works. Is like you need to you need to be able to travel fast, and you don't have, have access to fast travel. Then yeah, you win. You win if you get the gates. You win if you get the oath gates. You win if you get Odium's definitely interested in those oath gates for sure. So that's yep. true. Well. Let's let's try and not get too off topic. Let's talk about 
the Unkalaki uh, social structure. It's very easy for us to get distracted with the perpendicularity and large scale things. It is. <laughs> um, birth order. I'm, I'm, I, I actually want to distract us for a moment. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. I'm too tired to say no. Two things. One, uh, we talked earlier about Pagi and whether the pool there was emerald. It was. Uh, oh, I don't great. think there's okay. any any significance to like emerald pools being perpendicularities no. because um, <clears throat> the uh, perpendicularities of blue. autonomy here. <laughs> her, her, her. Even though it's referred to um, as cultivation's perpendicularity, so no. <laughs> yeah, but it's in world, so they could be wrong, Eric. Um, <laughs> Uh, point number two, uh, I found it interesting that when um, Rock tells the story of Hoyd uh, showing up to the peaks, Hoyd asks him about the current year, yep. according to the yeah. Kalaki calendar. Yep. Um, and and that's, that's probably nothing more than, well, Hoyd shows up from who knows what world knows uh, to Roshar, and he has been in Shazmar for who knows how long, and it doesn't matter how long you are in Shadesmar, the time that passes <laughs> in the physical realm is different, and you're coming from a different planet, so he probably needs so some kind of a reference time point. Doesn't, time doesn't flow differently. Time doesn't the, flow differently. In the cognitive realm, it doesn't. I think it's more like the years at different length. So he's just like, okay, I need to calibrate. To well, there's, there, there's that, but also like if you spend a lot of time in interplanetary space, you like there's yeah. no measure of time there unless you have like a clock or something. Well, yeah, sure. And so, like, you yeah. you don't know how much time you've that's spent. That's different there. than the time passing differently. Yeah, Fair. That, that's Fair. not time dilation. Even though, that's just even bad. though Brandon has hinted at time dilation in the cognitive realm in the past, and that's how world hoppers stay alive for a long. Oh, time. yeah, and just oh, made a face. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. Fine, 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 fine. I just Yay. wanted to bring up Hoyd brings up the calendar. That's it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Which is, uh, that in itself is a very interesting topic because it shows that like horn eaters do not use the Voran calendar. That's true. Oh, yeah. Also true. Yeah. Yeah. That's true as well. Oh, cool. Yeah. And it's I, probably based off of like the founding of the peaks. Oh, well, yeah. Would be my guess. You were like, say that? Nominally, Nate, whether or not it, no, Actually, no, no. Yes, they would you say, would say that, but the Voring calendar also appears to like start randomly in the middle of nowhere. So who knows? I start the calendar this year, the year I made it. Sure, <laughs> why not? Um, if you're like, the, if you're talking about like the beginning of like January happens in like the beginning well, in the I middle mean, of winter. So I mean, calendars well, are actually like, very interesting hemisphere. to read about. Like the development of That's calendars, it, it actually is really interesting. Mm -hmm. That's a separate podcast. Let's talk about calendars. And, what is a calendar? And, and Joff has asked about the beginning of the Voring calendar, and it's like, like we are 1173, 1174, a little over a thousand years, nothing majorly significant is going on on Roshar. We don't have the Sun Maker, we don't have a desolation, it's just... Somebody at that point decides that this is going to be a calendar time. Honor could have died, but that doesn't <laughs> mean we, calendars are retroactive. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like we don't. the Gregorian calendar, based off of like the year Jesus was born. When was he actually born? Who knows? We just say it's that year. Okay, let's anyway. steer way yes. beyond this. So let's talk about the Unkalaki uh, social structure. Because we haven't really talked Birth about Birth order. That. Yeah. Birth order. Kind of important. Uh, the first two... Do they say children or do they say sons? I think they say sons. First and second son. Okay, so... Okay. Quoting, quoting, Rox says, First and second son are needed for making food is most important. Without food, nobody lives. Third son is craftsman. That's me. Uh, I said proudly, yada yada. Only fourth son can be warrior. Uh, warriors, they are not needed as much as food or crafts. This makes me think that there is a different um, hierarchy for women. That there is probably first probably. and second daughter. Yeah. I'd and then so. your role might 
and then your role might change. I don't know. In other cultures, your role changes when you marry into another family and then your birth order, your order in that family might be different as well. But maybe maybe the horn eaters are more, Do you, you, you keep your role. But. Do you mean that, let's, let's say you're a fourth son, right? You're a soldier. Mm-hmm. Sure. And you marry into a family of only daughters. Does that make you now a farmer? Because you were a first son in that? Fa- Maybe it depends on whether they think about if a son marries into the into their wife's family or the wife marries into the woman and marries into her husband's family. I think that gets messy. I think, it does I get think, messy. I think they stay. I think they stay. Because like the, if you are, let, let's say, let's say, let, let's say you're you're a first, son. you're a farmer, and well, you, we don't know anything about the women. Like they might they might be also farmers exactly. and soldiers. This and, is like, just. Whatever. Just a theory, just a yeah, supposition. Good. Yeah, true. Yeah. But I, I, it, I don't think it makes sense if you are a first son, if you're a farmer and you marry into a family with a bunch of boys and now they're like, well, you got to be a soldier. Your valuable skill is no longer needed here. Like that's not, that's only a lot of different if, possibilities. Only if, only if it's a matriarchy. You just, you keep, you keep going on the son marrying into the woman's family. If it's a patriarchy, then the the son's role stays the same unless the son dies, and then and then things get mixed up. Yeah, because we know we know the son's role does change. Yeah, let's talk about death instead of instead of stuff we don't know about. Yeah, it's true, because uh, because we do know something about the men's role does change based on yep. death. Yep. Rock was we according to order Brandon. Rock was not always. A third son. He was not always a craftsman. He was not always a cook. He definitely shows proficiency with weapons, at yes. least bow, on, yes. on at least a couple of occasions. Yes. Well, he, he kills Amaran, no big. Um, <laughs> just yeah, yeah, no, just him. All. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> he can also pull a shard bow somehow. Vok is strong. We don't Rock's have any strong. information about why he can. We just know that it's weird well, and he shouldn't be yeah. able to. Well, I mean, horn eaters are big. They could just be naturally strong enough to do so. I they are big. I don't think they are short plate strong big. But like, the, the shard bows might not require shard plate strength. It's just the... But that's just the easy way for normal humans to get that, right? Like okay, if you're, sure, s- maybe if you're Dwayne the Rock Johnson, maybe you could. But if you're like someone else, it's like, yeah, I need plate because I'm not gonna get that buff. Yeah, you know, and, like, and it's not knows? like he's using the shard bow like as his main weapon. Like he sh- shoots how many arrows? One? one, maybe two. I think one. So it's like, all right, fine. That might have been like, okay, I can't do this more than once. I still think it's fishy, but I will allow that it's it's possible that it's a one off type of thing. I'm um, with I'm with Argent. I do think there is something a little bit funky with it. Well also See, he is like that wife. it's possible. That it's that it's possible, I'll give you. But it, I don't know if it's probable. I'm like, ooh, I think there's some funk. I think everything about rock is like there's a mystery here. But that's yeah, that's just where I land. Because uh, in Rock talking with uh, his wife, uh, he, there's this last line where uh, uh, he watched he, and was glad to hear Unkalaki again, a proper language, glad that the other men did not speak it. For if they did, they might have picked out the lies that he had told them, uh, which, you know, clearly is, is like referring to. Well, at yeah. that point, it's because like he's saying he's a third son. Both his elder brothers are dead. So he's not a third both? son anymore. Presumably that's who uh, Tifi and Sinakua ref- are yeah. referred to. Perhaps. Because there's like uh, Tuaka's let's, like, let's, oh, let's, then you! And Rock just says, I am a chef now. Ludamore said, firm. But I cook Tuaka. Let's uh let me let me go ahead and read this passage real quick because it's um it's relevant. To, okay, sure. To both society and, and Rock's story. So uh Lunamore's family shows up on the plains. Yep, yep. And Rock mentions or or his wife mentions that 
Kefa or Kefha, uh, which I assume to be um, like the the quote unquote light eyes um, that Rock came with. His the his Nautoma? Yeah, yeah, um, is dead. Yep. Uh, but what happened to you? Why so long without a word? And she asks. And then he doesn't say anything, and she follows up with, what if Tiffy and Sinakwa, she asks, dead? Rock says, they raised weapons in vengeance. So presumably they also came with him. Like, And, and yeah. so when Kefha died, they tried to get vengeance at Sadius, and they also died, because, you know, shard bearers. Um, and then she goes, then you, I'm a chef now, he says, but I cook. Waka. Uh, he pulled her clothes again. Come, let us take the children to safety. Yada yada. Who cares about the children? <laughs> this could all be no important, all important that, that, characters. No one says that in character. Just, <laughs> all of these characters could all be like really important characters in 10 years from now. In, uh, in, That's in 10 in years. Back, in back half. In, in, in 10 years, you wouldn't even remember this episode. Well, that's true. I, de- I, de- I personally won't. That's definitely true. Uh, and so what I'm, what I'm taking from this is Kefha is the Nuatoma. He's the light yep. eyes. Yep. Uh, Tifi and uh, Sinakwa. I'm not sold that they are his older brothers. It makes sense because the Nuatoma would bring his family who are his servants and like his entourage down from the peaks to the plains. Um, and so if the third, if the so rock was at least at the time, probably a fourth plus son. Um, or maybe not. I think by when they left the peaks, he was a th- son. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. That's, that's fine. Okay. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm probably mis- misinterpreting his words. Because he says, I'm a chef now. And so I assumed that meant that he went from a soldier to a, to a craftsman. Oh, okay. But what's, what's sure. probably happening is, since nobody knows like him or Unkalaki culture or his family or anything like that, he goes, I'm going to do what I want. And so he affirms to his wife, this is what I've chosen. I'm with you on that. No one around him is sort of like, oh, well, that makes you the top Farmer. dog, you know. Yeah. Right. In the situation, so like they ask him, and then he can just tell them whatever he wants about his culture yep. and where he, where what he's supposed to be doing, and. <laughs> and I'm clearly a chef. Like, no question, <laughs> I'm only a chef. I don't want to do fighting. Even Even though though this muscular giant is a chef. I I do find it weird that like because first and second sons are needed for making food and then third sons are craftsmen. Mm -hmm. Chef being put under craftsmen? Sure, yeah. Like you have a a profession. Because like I I don't think first and second are needed for making food is just farmer. I would also put chefs under that Pre- umbrella preparing I, food is different than growing food okay. i agree than being a farmer yeah like if i'm tending <clears throat> crops that is a different skill than me doing stuff with the grain that i'm making right like preparing Maybe. spices those are different things. skill sets and 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 the rock definitely approaches this as a craft uh, like a chef like yeah a craft uh, so he's not just providing food for his compatriots. He is treating this like he is making art out of yep. the yeah. stew. That's fair. Whatever he's not putting literal crap in it. I really like. I guess. I guess I kind of forgot. Obviously, I I remembered that uh, Rock killed Sadius, but. Clearly, this, this makes a lot of sense Try if you Try again. Try again. Sadius. <laughs> he wishes. Amram. <laughs> Look, I, technically, I mean, I mean, technically, technically, right. <laughs> technically, <laughs> Amram was is, Sadius. And is, you know what? True. I'll take being technically right, even though. No, no. technically, Meredith was Sadius. Moving on. Uh. <laughs> 
<laughs> it makes a lot of sense if Rock, you know, had that proficiency as a soldier, some tragedy happened, and he's like, no, I'm not doing that anymore. That's really good. Well, like if, if the previous if the previous craftsman in his family dies, like at least the male one, then then he he gets bumped into the well, we into don't the know third it was son's the, position. We don't know if it was the previous third son that died. It, it any one of his sure, sure, sure. Oh, that's yeah, a they, good they point. Yeah. Could've, they could've, they could have dropped. Them. Yeah, they could have dropped. Um, yeah. What I so we are we are approaching Headcanon County. Uh, what I think happened was that Tiffy and Sinakua were the first and second son. Okay. And Rock was the third. Not originally. There was there was another third who died, and that accident was somehow related to Rock's experience in the Emerald Pools and, uh, and him not? acquiring vision. Sure, why not? <laughs> um, and cool. so, so all of his older brothers die. His um, Nuatoma dies. And so when his wife comes to him and goes, um, then you, and he interrupts her saying, I'm a chef now. I think what she wants to say is, then Nuatoma. you are Nuatoma now. I 100%. So. Oh, definitely. Yeah, I, I agree. If this is like an inheritance thing, and he, we already know that he's related, and he's the only living male survivor of that entire group that went family group that went down i don't think it's oh you're the first brother then i think it's oh so you're the leader yep. of our clan that, now um i will say rock says his new otoma was like a cousin yeah to him yeah i think he likes i think that's a straight up lie i think that was either his father or his brother yeah, I would definitely. Yeah, like I would. I would buy that. I would buy that for sure. Well, especially because he said, he said to uh, the bridge crews that there was a cousin, and from his point of view, he's just like, "Oh yeah, I'm totally lying to the bridge crew about certain things, yep. right? About certain yep. things. Yeah. Yep. What if Kefha was like his eldest brother? Kefha dying bumped him up to third. And that, then, like, all the brothers were, like, servants to Sidious. Then, later on, Tifi and Sinakua rose up in, like, to revenge. Like, yo, they, you killed our older brother. They we're raised gonna weapons and vengeance. That fits. <clears throat> but then, so, like, oh. yeah. he, he accepted the role of going up to third while like his two old brothers were still alive but like when they died like he couldn't progress even though he should have risen up to no new at all there's the way no to the one top. else there's no one else around he's a slave he's like what's the point i'm just gonna cook food for these guys i can yep. see that i buy that completely this, this. i also think that based on this line about um the brothers raising weapons and vengeance. Mm -hmm. I think Rock's whole thing about not wanting to hold a weapon is not about Rock, uh, Horn Eater tradition. I think it's about his own issues because it mm -hmm. doesn't seem to be, you know, when he says, oh, I'm a third son, it's beneath me. I think that's a little bit of a... Excuse. Like when it's called... Excuse. I think like when it's called for, it looks like they were allowed to. Yeah, well, they picked, they yeah. raised weapons and vengeance. It doesn't seem like it. They, it was like a shameful thing. It was like it was okay for them to do that. Like, yeah, they you killed weapons. Kappa. Like that is yeah. Not okay. We'll we'll try. So that's what that's kind of what this this single exchange is. What made me think that Rock's whole thing about not wanting to hold a weapon, not wanting to kill, is actually a very personal thing, not a not a cultural thing. And I yeah. think having been raised as a fourth son, he would have a very different perspective of combat than an elder son right that's a good point sure yeah he will if 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 the peaks are warring with each other which they apparently do every now and then because like well they not did historically nation. but yeah. yeah uh so like rock may have seen more than just training with like the training dummies he may have seen actual combat and death and so his aversion to that may be 
like he he he's probably looking at the opportunity to become a craftsman as a great opportunity like i'm i'm getting away from this life i don't want to do this thing which is growing crops that i don't want to do like this is great i'm in the middle i don't want to lead people i don't want to grow crops i don't want to fight people this is perfect if only my family didn't have to die for this yes also here's another line from this like same conversation with tuak no, my love, I am a fool. I would blame the air, but I was a fool above too. A fool to ever let Kefha leave on this errand of stupidity. That definitely implies like he was a lot closer to Kefha mm. than just sort of a cousin. I'm going to disagree with you on this one. Uh, there are plenty of cousins who are closer than brothers out there. But it doesn't match how he described it previously. Like this, oh, he was he was he, he was a hundred percent downplaying his mm, his yeah. connection to his new Atoma. Yeah, I Shannon, I do really like that. Rock's disgust with fighting is definitely a very personal thing, very very core to who he is. Like that that yeah. totally fits. Uh, and I'm really digging this. And I think this thinking about all this is like. There's totally a short story opportunity with Rock and Brandon's like, oh yeah, there's uh there's a Rock novella post Oathbringer involving him returning to his homeland and like, well, there's some stuff there. Yes. Yeah. I'm like there's if you if you, if it can't get into book four, which I don't know anything about book about book four, if he can't for whatever reason can't get Horny to peak as much as we want to see this, I'm so excited for that novella. Fingers Truth. crossed that it's Truth. possible. So excited. And there, there was another word of Brandon that uh, uh, said that uh, the rock novella kind of needs to happen. <laughs> Great, thanks. What I, what, I, what I think this means is that in the same way that Edge Dancer sets up Oathbringer in a very small way, like if if we didn't have Edge Dancer, then seeing Nail kind of flip flop between Words of Radiance and and Oathbringer would feel a little bit jarring. Then I think the Rock novella is going to serve a similar purpose, where it's going to set up things that if we don't have that reading. The one year later, Rhythm of War is going to feel a little like Rhythm of War. We are going to go to the Storm Eater Peaks. Storm Eater. <laughs> <laughs> we, we can't get this word right. <laughs> I, I like Just it. I like the Locky and you're good. We're going to go to the Storm Storm Peaks. Uh, yeah, I love the Horn Storm Peaks. <laughs> the Horn Storm Eater Peaks. <laughs> the Horn. Hornstorm. Hornstorm. Uh, <laughs> We're going to go to the Hornyter Peaks in book four. And Rock is already going to be either there or he would have gone there and he's going to be on the way back. Like, that's what I'm getting out of this. Or that we're going to we're gonna find out that something happened at the Hornyter Peaks in book four, maybe. That it's going to be, wait, that's what happened? And we're, you know, maybe, maybe it would be so significant that it would be like, oh my gosh, that's such a big thing to have happened off screen. Maybe, yeah, maybe yeah. that's that, like, that's yeah. kind of what you're aiming for. Yeah, or, yeah something like that. Something and, like that. And something similar to maybe Rock comes to terms with these conflicts and is more ready for stuff that is going to happen in Rhythms of War. That maybe, oh, yeah, maybe like he becomes like more okay with being a warrior given the war that's yeah. happening which like yeah. Oathbringer alludes to because Rock did that killing of Amaram and but you can't do a one year later there's kind of a jump there that you, you know, might need I to bet develop. you I bet you it is actually part of the new Atomas role if they're if the new Atomas are always going down to fight for the shard, uh, shard bearers so I mean like I don't think it's only a fourth sun thing yes, I Ian. think there is so when <laughs> Rock is talking about the new Otomas coming down to get the shards, mm-hmm. it's because there's a cultural belief that the first oh, yeah. new Otoma that gets a shard becomes king of all horny. 
Oh. And guess who just got a shard blade? And gave oh. it back to Dalinar. Yeah, but he, he could... also got Meridas's other there. He got oh. two shard blades and a set of shards. Because remember, and he got, was dual yeah. wielding. Yeah. And, and, but, but even more than all of that, Rock could just ponder spread. <laughs> well, yeah, sure. Yes. And like that, that would super count. And so if, Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ah, okay. There's a novella right, here. I like it. There's a novella. Here. <laughs> I like it. We have we have Stormlight 1.5 King Lopen the first of Alatkar, and now we're gonna have King Lunamore of the Horn Eater Peaks. You did it right this time. Yep. Hey, remember in the same conversation we've been talking about when Rock says to his wife and says, hey, you're going to like the Tower of Uruthiru. It's it's a little like the peaks. Mm. Yeah, right. Wait, going know, off I what just, Buddy and said, yeah. It's a throwaway line. I, I do think it's a throwaway, but it's one of those little like, hmm, you know what? Yeah. I really think it's just, hey, it's up high in the mountains. Well... And it's also not freezing cold. A little like the peaks, whatever yeah, that means. I mean, we we you we you all were you dudes yeah. were the one who brought up the sibling. I'm just uh, I'm not just you dudes. I'm that connecting was, the dots. Yes, Ian. Ian brought up <laughs> that, the that was me. Ian He's this way on my screen. He's yeah. this I way am on my also screen. Also that direction. <laughs> I love how on on the the recording for everyone it's like everyone is not pointing to Ian. Um. Well, this is awesome. <laughs> What do we, do we have any other final thoughts on Rock and the Horn Eaters? Yes, I have two things. Yes, one is we know that the Horn Eaters did intermix with the Yak, the Vaden to a certain extent, yep. which is reflected in how, like, in Vaden houses, um, sons do have like titles based on their birth order, like oh! non Helleran. I mean, maybe, and yeah. That, that's... It does, ch- like, wh- yes. and they do change when Helen is... gets, like, disowned. That, that's true, though. Fair. I like, I'm digging that. That's Ooh. nice. I like that a lot. Yeah. I that totally is forgot fair. that. I've always assumed that was just, a, like, a way to say first son and second son. But okay, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, I dig, I dig but, the connection. Yeah. yeah. But we yeah. don't see that in, like, a Lefty culture. I do think that is, we, from the peaks. All right. Right, and fair, two, cool. I'm a fan of real world history. And so like this birth order, like kind of defining like what your job is, is somewhat reminiscent of like European nobility-ish, where it's like the first son was the heir, the second son was went the to backup the, heir. Yeah. Yeah. The third the, son went to the clergy or something. Mm-hmm. And and then fourth sons was like become this, a knight or something like yeah just join the knighthood leave. dude mm-hmm. <laughs> just yeah, don't be a waste of space yeah the heir <laughs> the spare the priest the soldier mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. uh and on that note i always thought it's interesting how both the horn eaters and the shin consider the act of growing food to be very valuable so the first two sons in the Horn Eaters are responsible for food in, in however way they are. And the farmers in amongst Shin are among the most valued. And the soldiers there are amongst the least. So mm-hmm. interesting thing tying back. Language families are very sharp. The oh, Donate. That's, that's a while. Um, yes, it is. And so there's there is a wob where Brennan like goes in and like explains each and the, language the Donate families. language family is Shin, uh, Parshendi, and Horny. That is an interesting three to get together, given mm-hmm. especially that, Shin. I think that does point us to a better timeline for when this started to happen. Now, does yeah, I like and, that. And for the uh, record, the other major. Language families are Vorin, Makabaki, Eri, 
in Amien. Well, mm-hmm. yeah, okay. Amien doesn't really count because it's just like two unrelated languages. That does but- make me think that the Horn Eaters history is probably a lot longer than Yeah. Yeah. It's it's it probably pretty ancient by the by Roshar and standards. Forgot about the Shin being done it? Yeah. But- Donate. Yeah. But we we should talk about uh, those language families more. We should definitely talk up we should do a Shin podcast. That's always been on our agenda for a while. Let's do that. Let's cover all like the ethnic groups of Roshar in a series of seven podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> it's it doesn't it's not quite as snappy as myths of Roshar or history of Roshar. Ethnic groups of Roshar, part <laughs> seventeen. <laughs> there has been we an eerie this one, one right? right? So, yeah, we did, we did eerie, we did horn eaters. We just need that, to do. Has there eerie, been an Imea one already? You've already done Imea, right? Ish. Uh, ish. Ish. Okay. For what we know. Um, so not really Ma- like the Imeans, but more like, okay. Gotcha. Makabaki, maybe, definitely. Maybe they should more wait. Maybe zone. Imea should wait. Yeah. Oh, definitely. And, more any, information required. Any other uh, final and, thoughts? I don't. This was all just very good. This was very good. Thank you yeah. all for being here. And thank you, Grace, for outlining this and getting quotes thank for you, us Grace. so I didn't this have to was, do research. It was Excellent. a great collection of quotes and wobs. Good. Thank you. So, you know what time it is? It's time for Who's That Cosmere Character? <laughs> oh, oh. My favorite. Or is it? This character is from Roshar. Menace. Yeah. Tom. Braze. Void in drag on a horse. <laughs> it's time for Who's That Cosmere Character? Call. All right, everyone. You know the game. You send in five clues and a character to WTCC at 17shard.com. We read uh, each clue. Every, uh, every panelist gets a guess, and they get to guess. Who is, who's that cosmic character? This first one is sent in by Yeshea, who said that I shouldn't sweat the pronunciation, so that's what I went with. Cool. Clue number one, this character's god is dead. (laughs) Whoa, boy. Uh, This this isn't a, this character is male. Like, yeah, all right. Is it, you know, this is a great, just like very open... Mm-hmm. It is. There's a, there's plenty to choose from. I'm gonna say Hoid. It is not Hoid. Okay. Lalarmar, the high priest of light song. I like Ooh. that, but it is not. That's a great answer. I hate that pronunciation. Yeah, me too. What else would uh, it be? I'm gonna go with. That's that's not technically true, but I'll go with silence. It is not silence. This character does not have an. As much investiturical ability as people believe they do. That's, <sighs> that's what the clue okay. says, okay? All right. We, 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 we know what it means. Yeah, okay. we know what it means. Okay. In-world people or out-world people? As people believe they do. Wern, <sighs> the king. It is not Wern. I see what you did there. <laughs> is it the Lord Ruler? It is not the Lord Ruler. Okay. Uh, shy? It is not shy. Clue three. Hoyd has spied on this character. I was going to... I'm going to say Gox. It is not Gox. Okay. Hoyd has that, spied I, I feel like that narrows it down to like... Two... <laughs> <laughs> well great then you'll have a great guess except neither one applies <clears throat> oh well that's unfortunate. i'm like great because i don't know any i this doesn't narrow it down for me at all <laughs> so quite a spied on this character yikes well the final empire <laughs> the well of ascension okay <laughs> hero of ages are you gonna list every book quite has been in <laughs> Warbreaker. Okay. <laughs> Elantris. I'm going to guess Dalinar just to get out of the way. Because if someone Dalinar. else guesses Dalinar and it's... It's not Dalinar. Okay. But, uh, you know, that, that fits several crews. I like that. Yeah. 
is God's dead. God's dead. The investiture one, eh. Hoyt yeah. has spied on them. Hoyt is um, anywhere Hoyt has appeared, I assume he's always. In the interest of time, I'm gonna guess Elkar. It is not Elkar. Clue four. This character wears a very expensive item. <sighs> Yeoman. It is Yeoman. Because he has the um bead of Atium. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. I, do oh. we know that do we know that Hoyt has spied on him? To be fair, I don't remember that. Uh, but like he was Hoyt in the is city. in the city. So Yeah. But why? Don't know. Questionable. <laughs> Questionable. To I that's Calcium. why my thing is like if Hoyt has appeared in the area, I'm always like I assume he knows everything. So. Yeah. So, um Slow Swift does tell or is it Slow Swift that tells Vin about Hoyt it's, or uh, set Ashweather? Okay. <laughs> and was it just for like general information about the city or specifically on for getting information on you? I don't know. I don't know. I didn't know. It may, it may have been either way. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, I will. I will allow one? it. Yeah. I'll uh, allow it. Clue five was this character has a body of water named after them. The Sea of Yemen. Yemen, <laughs> actually. Yemen. Yeah. I would not have guessed that because <laughs> I don't know my geography. Of I stare at those maps too much. Uh, <laughs> All right. This next one is sent in with from Eric with an A rather than an E, which is, you know, A R I C. Yeah. Yeah. Look, I I know it's not what you chose. Your parents chose it. That's (laughs) fine. Clue one this character is driven by a strong sense of duty. Is it? Is it Serene? Sorry, say that again. Is it Serene? It is not Serene. Uh, how about Gorodel? It is not Gorodel. I'm gonna keep with the Elantris train and say Duke Roiel. No. Okay. Clue two. This character has dark eyes. Oh, well, that's good to know. I don't want to say his name. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you thinking? The obvious one. I don't know. I don't know. What What could that mean? Okay, I'm good. Kaladin. It's not Kaladin. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad someone got it out of the way. <laughs> oh, I, I, I thought the obvious one was going to be uh, my guess, which is Town. It is not Town. That would have been such a good one, though. <gasps> That's good. Is it? Is it Yezrian? It is not Yezrian. Clue okay. three. This character usually carries a weapon. Oh well, that's good to know. I feel like any of Bridge Four could. I know. I was thinking. Count. I was running through all my Bridge Four <laughs> people. Scar. It is oh, not Scar. Okay. I'm gonna go back to Cell and say Sail. It is not Sailin. Oh, I was trying to remember his name. I was, I was trying to guess the same character. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but I don't know who to guess. Oh, well, that's unfortunate. You still, like, well, you can. Uh, dark eyes, weapon, sense of duty. Still plenty of bridge four. <laughs> still so many bridge four. Uh, Taleb. No, Clue four. This character will protect their family. Crate. <laughs> is it? No. Ham. It is not ham. Good guess. I like that. See, the thing is, I don't necessarily know his dark eyes outside of Roshar, so I'm like... Yeah, that, yeah. that's gotta have to guess. Yeah. Is it Lopen? It is not Lopen. Okay. What about, what about Rock? It is not rock. Ah, got to go to the podcast. (laughs) Yeah. Topic. (laughs) Clue five, and I I may give you a sixth bonus clue. That's not on here. Clue five, this character is not male. Fantastic. 
That's great. That's can we, we get do. all the clues? You may. I, Th- this character is driven by a strong sense of duty. This character has dark eyes. This character usually carries a weapon. This character will protect their family. This character is not male. Silence Montaigne? No. Okay. We don't know the color of her eyes. I guessed. <sighs> <laughs> I, like, I know you guessed, but I also just reread that for the explicit purpose of finding physical descriptions and we don't know the color of her eyes. <laughs> um, or anything about her, by the way. Like, there is no description of silence. Uh, you know, like, I'm like, oh, it's Yasna, but obviously that does not count. <laughs> Yeah, I keep going. Nope. Yes. Um, what about Vin? Not Vin. I was thinking about her, but I was like, eh, main character. Yeah, it's always iffy, but like... It's always iffy with vague. Uh, gotta say clips. it, gotta say it. Yeah. I'm sometimes, like, I'm like, sometimes, sometimes it's a main character with like super like obscure clues. Which are mm. good. That's good. I like yeah. which is Which is interesting, yeah. Oh boy, this shouldn't be as hard as it is, but it is. Um, is it alternate universe theft? Is it alternate universe theft? <laughs> Gender In which he's, theft. he's female. <laughs> Gender mm. Is that your guess? <laughs> okay, just making no. sure. <laughs> That's so funny, though. Um, Bridge four, but they're all female. I, I that that's that sounds. I like that. Is but, it? But, but they still wear the best. Is it, yep. is it Shalash? Is that Yezrian's daughter? Uh, it is. is Yezrian's daughter, but it is not that character. Uh, I will give you a sixth bonus clue. This character is from Taldane. Oh, okay. Ice. <laughs> it's ice. Ice. Oh, ice. Yeah. Who uh, is uh, as ace in the graphic audio, by the way? I okay. don't know if that means anything. Brandon and pronouncing AI like A <laughs> does that. <laughs> yeah, I I don't know, but uh, yeah, it's it's always it's always tricky with white sand ones because it's like ah, you have to pay attention to the art to remember <laughs> these things, and that I didn't read it. Uh... That 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 has historically been an issue on Chardcast. It's like ah, I have to remember physical details from the art. Ooh. That's, yeah, that's <laughs> rough. It, 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 I mean, protect, protect, like, protecting her family is a big, big plot thing. It, it for, really is. For Ice. Yeah. And yeah. her duty is a um, very strong aspect of her yep. character. It's like yep. super the strong. The Dark Eyes thing, eh. That's, that's kind of me. That was a nice little herring for to get us on the Roshar and track. It was a uh, ice little herring. <laughs> <laughs> Huh. That's not even no. It's bad. <laughs> <laughs> That's not even okay. funny. Bad. It's just bad. Bring us home, Eric. Bring us home. <laughs> I no, am don't home, bring me home. It looks like a crappy home. Hey, <gasps> go find a new one. I, I, mean, I am doing that. In fact, <laughs> I'm gonna have even more acoustic foam panels. In fact, uh, not what? that the camera will notice. All right, everyone. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Follow us on 17shard.com for all your news, discussion, theories, and fun that you could ever hope for. Join us on Discord where you can chat with us and other awesome people who listen to this show, because all of you are awesome. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, SoundCloud, YouTube. Leave us a review on iTunes. If you like what we do, you can uh, hit us up on Patreon. Wait. You can support us on Patreon. <laughs> like, wait. I mean, you could you could hit us up on Patreon. Like, there's the community. Argent account. would like that. Uh, <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, this is. <laughs> I we will... guess I would, but. <laughs> and yep. we, will... I don't know how much I'm gonna edit of this end part. <laughs> and no. we will see you all next time. <laughs> Bye. 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 Call. I I don't know why I made Patreon a dating site somehow, but that's what I, I did. I don't know why I did. <laughs>